In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to create a um, set of hex lights such as this. So kind of that neon glow. Um, so we're going to need to do a couple of things. We're first of all going to have to have multiple materials on our model so that we can get this kind of edge frame going around here. Um, and we're going to have to use a couple of UV sets and a couple of gradient textures so that we can have the model kind of glowing brighter here and then fading off and it going from blue to kind of pink. And you can see it's just one asset. So we'll jump into Maya and um, with our model selected, if we just have a look at the default UV set, all we've got here is the areas that are going to glow neon are filling up most of the texture space. And then all the other bits of the model, um, so all the kind of around the frame and stuff like that, are just really small on the UV. Now the reason we've done that is because that's just going to have a basic kind of matte grey material on it. It doesn't need any UV space. Um, so this would be great for controlling um, when it's bright here and then fading off. But what about for um, going from one colour to the other? Well, what we're going to have to do is make another UV set. So we're going to go to UVs. And we're going to do Create Empty UV Set. So UVs create empty UV set. And you can see here now we have Map 1 and then we have UV set. So we have an additional UV set. And there's nothing in here at the moment. So what we're going to do is just maybe we we'll just go to our top view. And then we're going to go to UV and we're going to go camera base. And what that will do is generate our UVs based on our camera, but we might be we might need to be better if we're in perspective view like so. And then we do it, UVs, camera base, so that we actually get um, the shape a bit more accurate. Now the reason we've done this is because we're going to use a black and white mask, so black and a black and white gradient. So we're going to go from black to grey to white. Where it's black, we're going to have the kind of blue, and where it's white, we're going to have the red, and then it'll fade kind of between the two colours. So this UV set will control um, when it's much strong, the glow is stronger in the centre and fades out. And this UV set will control the colour of the glow as it goes from that side to that side. So that should be all we need. So with our um, model selected, we'll go to export selection and take that into our project. Um, so I'm just going to stick that on my desktop. You can see obviously I've already exported this just to get this working, so we'll just call this the uh, we'll jump into here and we'll go gonna make a new folder. And we'll call this Hex Lights Tutorial. Then in here I'm going to import my new model and we'll just import that. So we'll drag that into the scene. Um, and at the moment, you can see we've only got one model, uh, one material on the asset. So let's just go back into Maya, and we will um, assign one material to our glowing areas, and then one material to everything else. So obviously, one way to do this would be just to select each face like so. But just to show you some different ways of selecting that, I'm going to go to my modeling toolkit. I'm going to go to selection constraint, and I'm going to set that to angle and ten. So that means when I select that face, it will select them all, um, those two faces rather than just the one. So that's a nice way to do it. Uh, the other way to do it is to come into our UVs, go to UV set here, and just select those like that. Because that way, if we just see here, that will just select all of those faces like so. Then I'm going to right click, assign new material, just stick a file on there. And to be fair, that will do. So what we can do there is delete history freeze transform and we could rename these properly so call that kind of glow and that well, that's number one. So um, we do export selection, go back to our same asset, come back into here, import, reselect the asset. We'll reset it to FBX. So that was that dialog, which I closed down a bit too quickly, was basically saying, do you want to keep the materials you've already got assigned on the model? or do you want to um, completely reset it? So in this case, we said, let's just reset it. Okay, so now we have um, two materials on our asset, that one and that one. So we're gonna right click and make a new material. We're gonna call this hex glow. 
we'll double click in here and we'll start getting our glow material set up. So the uh, first thing we need to do is um, bring in two texture samples. So we just press T and T, that brings our two texture samples in. And we'll make those um, in Photoshop in a minute. We might as well just get the shader set up first. We're then going to use a lab and we're going to make three colors. Um, to make the lab, I just hold, hold, hold down L and left click. And I'm going to hold on free and left click twice to get two colors. And I'm going to drag those into A and B. And let's just drop blue into one. And in this one, we will drop pink. Maybe we'll make that a bit more, uh, bit more red, like so. Then we'll drop this texture into alpha. So we need a gradient to drop into this, so that when it's black on this side, it will show blue, and when it's white on that side, it will show our kind of pinky red. So let's just jump into um, Photoshop, we'll do a new image. We can keep this nice and small. It does need to be reasonably large, so we'll just do 512, and we will use our gradient tool to make that black to white, like so. So we do file, save as, um, well I actually don't need to save those because I do already have them in the project. Uh, the other texture we need is a radial gradient, so all you need to do is hit this tab here, and I think it's just click from the center to the edge, and that will make your radial gradient like so. Um, you might want to have it the other way around. Will that swap it for us? I don't think it will, but we'll try it anyway. Okay, yeah, that does swap it. So, um, yeah, either way around will work, to be fair. You can just kind of swap them out. So, the radial gradient, what that's going to do is, basically, we're going to use it on this UV. Where it's white, the glow is really strong, and where it's black, it um, lowers in strength. So with your two gradients made, I'm just going to go here. And we'll load our radial gradient in there. And we'll load our, uh, maybe that one, into there. Okay, so we now have our two gradients. So the next thing we want to do then is if we just um, add a So we add our multiply and then we connect that to a of color. Now the reason we've added our multiply is so that we can multiply our two kind of gradient sets together. So let's add another lerp to this. Then we will add two constants and connect those into place. And then we will put our RGB in here and plug that into our multiply. Um, our two settings for this um, need to be defined. So let's try putting in, say, just 1 and 0 for now. Now you see I'm getting this error here. That's because it's you're saying you've got two float here going into a free float. So we'll just drop our red channel into there. It will achieve exactly the same result, but we will get rid of that error. Now. At the moment, they're all using the same UV set. We need to make sure that these are using the different UV sets that we created in Maya. So if we just jump back into Maya, we'll go to our first UV set, which will be defined as UV set zero in Unreal. That needs to use our radial gradient. UV set one needs to use our um, standard gradient. So if we just jump back into here, um, we'll right click and we'll make a texture coordinate and then we'll duplicate that and we'll plug each of these into here. Now by default it uses UV set 0 so that one is fine and on this one we just want to set it to use UV set 1. Um, so if we just hit save and then come out of here and you can see it's kind of roughly doing what we want it to do. We've got blue going up to our pink, and the edges are connecting like that. I just want to show you here, if I just plug in this set and leave off our um, radial gradient, you'll see we just have the colors going straight out to there. 
So one thing we'll want to do is kind of set these values to be um, a bit more useful. So um, let's try, first of all, bringing that down to 0.5. Give this a save. Okay, try this on 0.5 and maybe this on 1. There we go. So we can see you um, just messing around with these values will help you achieve a kind of nice result. It kind of all depends what it is you're looking for. Um, so the other thing we haven't got is the actual control of the strength of this glow. The glow isn't very bright at all. Now when you're using a free constant like this, when you pick a color just on this um, color wheel here, it'll only set your values between 0 and 1. Now that value is also designed um, defining the strength of the glow. So if we just try sticking 100 in there and hit save, you'll see the color stays the same, but the actual glow strength increases. And if we go to our blue here and we set 100 in blue, and just hit save, you'll see we get blue, um, we get the strength in the kind of blue as well. So again, we might want to just mess around with our settings in this. Um, you can always uh, preview this as well to see what's going on, like that. You can see you can define those kind of edges there. So maybe we'll try 0.2 and 0.6. even lower. So it's all about just messing around with these values. You can always set them to scalar parameters as well, by the way. It kind of like depends on what it is you are. Um, how long you're going to kind of tweak those values, because if you're going to be doing it a lot, it's much quicker to do it as a, um, as a material instance. Um, so yeah, we now have control over that and that. Okay, so the only other thing we need to do is just make a really simple material to apply to those. So I'll just make a material here, and I'm not even going to use any textures, hence why I didn't bother with any UVs. I'm literally just going to drop a constant free for the base color, a one, a one vector for that, a one vector for the roughness, and that should kind of be it, really. Um, my color, I'm just going to set to like a lighter gray. Metallic. I'm going to make it a metal and a roughness set to about 0.65. And there we go, we can just stick that onto our edges there. Okay, so that's how you make your um, make your hex, light, hex lights. Um, if you want these to actually cast light, uh, you need to Go down to your light mass setting, assuming you're using bake lighting, of course. Um, you can use emissive for static lights, um, and I think you need to do that on all of your assets. I can never remember if it's um, just where it says, if true, allow using the emissive for static lighting. So maybe you actually don't need to do it on this if you don't want this to receive that, receive that glow. You need to do it on these. So if we just do build now. We might find we don't really get much glow from these because they're only kind of blowing up like that. So obviously we're getting glow from these ones on the wall here, which is essentially the same material. Okay, so that's how we would make hex lights in Unreal.